Welcome to yet another Wex Winter Challenge. I'm Sean Briggs. Some of you might recognize me as the previous two-time winner of the previous two Wex Winter Challenge videos that we have done, yay me. But this time we decided it would be unfair for me to take part seeing as I just keep winning them. Uh, we actually opted that I would actually run the next challenge and judge the next challenge, which is going to be about making a short film in three shots. I've compiled a few like Polaroid pictures which are acting effectively as storyboards for this challenge. And the idea is, is that George and Amy are going to choose from a selection three shots that they would like to use to make a three shot short film using this, this, this set that I've, that I've made. They will then have to go ahead and edit their three shots using the editing suite over there. They've got a microphone so they can do a little bit of Foley or VO if they want to. It's down to their discretion, but they have to use the microphone in some capacity and basically edit their three shots together with 10 tracks of music. They can choose one or two or however many they like, but it just saves on that music choice time. And then once they've got their video together, um, that's the challenge completed. They'll have 45 minutes to complete the whole process of, you know, pre-production, production and post-production. And uh, yeah, they won't be scored on time, so it's not a race. There's just a cap of 45 to just, you know, hurry them along a bit so they just don't, you know, take the mick or anything. Part of the challenge as well is to build the kit for the job because that is a big part of filmmaking is knowing what you're going to use, like what's efficient, what's effective, what's going to give you the best results. So we've got a nice selection of equipment here. We've got this uh, Manfrotto gimbal, very nice for your smooth cinematic motion shots. Um, the camera that I'm forcing them to use is the Lumix BS1H. It's full frame, but it is a box camera. So there's a lot of accessorizing you have to do to actually get it to be ready for use. So, you know, we've got an Atomos here, which can work as their monitor um, and a tripod if they want to just have it on sticks to keep things just uh, steady and still. But something I am enforcing is that every shot they take will have to have some form of motion. So any shot that does not have movement in it of some kind, like a panning or a tilt or anything like that, that's a disqualification right there. But we also have the Lumix S prime lenses along with a couple of zooms. So yeah, they've got plenty of options for focal lengths and everything. They are working with quite a small set. So they'll have to think about how to, you know, film that small things, maybe make them feel a bit larger on screen. It's all depending on what their intentions are for their film because it's entirely an open book. There's no restraints on story or genre really. It's just making a film from three shots with this kit. And they got a bunch of lights up there to use as well, so they can pretty it up if they need to. All right, guys, welcome to the uh, Wex Winter Challenge. Um, we're make, calling this one Story Makers, uh, a reference of an old kids show that I used to frequent in my childhood. So uh, as you can see, we've got a lovely humble abode for your location, mm -hmm. uh, nice uh, snowy scenery that you can utilize. Uh, characters, penguin. You can use a pe puppet penguin. You've got a little plushy penguin here, you, you know, father, son kind of thing, maybe. Or, you know, um, you can interpret the characters however you want, really. All you really have to do is stick to these storyboards, mm -hmm. get creative and just make sure that you add a motion shot for each of these storyboards because yep. you will be marked on actually using the equipment, not just standing it on sticks and so on and so So use forth. these kind of as like inspiration? These are your inspiration. Um, is, it, is it like camera motion or like zooms? Does a zoom count? Yes. Okay. So zooms count, tilts, pans, tracking shots. Yep. Of course you can go handheld if you want to. Does it have to be while we're shooting? What do you mean? Or can it be in post for movement? No, it has to be while you're shooting. Because otherwise you're not utilising the equipment. It becomes, <laughs> it becomes insufficient that way. But yeah, basically no limits on what genre. So you can go... I'm not going to give you any ideas past that. You can go with any genre that you like, any look and feel that you like, any grade type that you like, black and white if you prefer black and white, that kind of thing. Um, and that is pretty much it. I think, uh, Amy, you're the first letter of the alphabet in your name, so we'll go with you that first. 
I'm pretty excited for this. It's quite a challenge, it's quite a lot to do. Obviously we've only got 45 minutes and we're kind of limited to just this stuff here, the kit we've got behind us, and we're just in this room. So it's gonna be a lot to do, but I've got some initial ideas from looking at Sean's Insta, so I'm gonna have another look in a minute and I've grabbed a pad just so I can jot down some ideas because I think I'm gonna to need to be quite organized to get this done in time. Right, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for this task, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie, but what I am going to do is I think I'm going to use the gimbal to give that real dynamicness to my shots, compete with the Amy as much as I can, but just use my general filmmaking intellect to carry me through this task. Okay, so some of these are hilarious, and I think if I wasn't doing this for wax, I'd probably turn this into a horror, but it's not suitable for this channel. Right, I don't really know which ones I want to use except from one, which I'm sure I want to use because I have a really good idea for it. Uh, which is the one of the this little penguin inside the house. So I've got to, I've got to make use of these two, right? Um, I'm thinking probably parent and child. But yeah, I'm going to go for this one. So if you can see it there, Sean gives you a nice little focus pull. My initial thoughts are we've only got three shots. So initial sh thoughts are moral will be um, moral will be the the person being there. Um, is more important than the presence. Um, so to build the story around that, I'm gonna get this one, which is the same penguin figure running away from the house. They're my three. Okay. I think they, uh, they give me good inspiration. Uh, whether that's, do I have to decide if they're gonna go like what order? So I need to settle this up. I'm going to get my gimbal shot first because I think it's going to be the most awkward one. To finish it off, I'm, I'm going to take this one which looks like there's some form of dead Yoda. What I'll do with it, I don't know. So that's my three. Right, I'm going to start with this. I'm just going to get this atom all set up. So I'm going to go for the gimbal here because I think when we've been given a gimbal on a tripod for me, the gimbal was a lot more dynamic. Um, there's a lot more I'm just going to be able to do with it. I really just want to use one lens probably if I'm going to use a gimbal. So I'm going to go for 1635. Now we've set that up and I'm going to set up by scene. Doesn't matter how many times I set up a gimbal, I always seem to want to put them on. Ah, sugar and no nutrients. One thing I don't like about this scene is the background. Now, Sean didn't say we couldn't move the table. So I'm going to move it to in front of a piano over there that's got a blue covering on it. And I'm hoping it will just give a little bit of a nicer, like, nighttime outside background. That's the plan. Lift with your knees, lift with your knees. where parent penguin might appear from. I'm just going to start filming. I'm just going to do the first shot and figure it out from there. This side here. It's actually near perfect height. It's actually a bit too tall. There's this. Sounds good. Sure. I've actually just seen that we do have a little thread here where we can put the monitor. Okay. Bit annoying, this zoom is just really heavy like so and now this should be a lot easier to quickly balance all right i think that's shot number one done 
So that is my tracking shot sort of going into the open household with the police and perhaps the policeman, perhaps the reason the police have been called, waiting out the back. I'm just going to put this down so it's actually really heavy. I just want this to pan, I don't want to accidentally put it up or anything. First of three shots, he's going to have presents in his mouth. Uh, Is that on or off? Off. Ugh. Okay, cool. Right. Gotta make this happen as quickly as we can. Cool, so I'm just cutting now. I've already got my first shot and spliced into the timeline. While that's all copying over, I'm gonna listen to the music that we've got. I panic too much. I'm just gonna do all my sounds in one recording. Hmm. All right, well, hopefully that works. Why don't I just get the thing? Hello, son. I've got the best presents for you. I spent all day picking them. Well, we don't believe you. Mm. Our presence is more important. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, see? Oh, that's so annoying, but hey-ho. We work with what you got in film. Uh, I guess this is it then. <laughs> you having fun? I'm very stressed, John. Wow, all right. That was so much harder than I thought it was going to be to do that in 45 minutes. Honestly, I came in really confident. That was a lot harder to do in 45 minutes than I had previously realised. <laughs> okay, that is the most horrific short film you'll ever see in your life. And if anybody's hoping to follow a personal YouTube channel from this, then don't. I wish Dad was here. I'm so lonely. The fire will go out soon. It's Christmas Day. Hello, son. I've got the best presents for you. I spent all day picking them. You're the only present I wanted, Dad. Mmm. More important is our presents than presents, it seems. Happy holidays. Very nice, very nice. Good story. Bring a tear to your very eyes today. Yeah, yeah, very emotional. Yeah, I can see the music. Very, the music was music choice was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, very nice. You set up your story very well with the opening dialogue and a nice camera move there. And so storytelling, I, I'd probably give that a twelve because it was quite moving. Twelve out of fifteen. Wow. Mm. Yeah, strong. Well, going in strong because you know okay. with what you have to work with and the time constraints and everything, I think that you had the right idea with your story structure. That you presented a problem, then you presented like the introduction of the father with a resolution and then the heartwarming send off from a wise man Christmas Yoda. Um, I like what you did like during your production process where you actually moved the table because you felt you could get a better backdrop. And you know, you didn't have a lot to work with, but you utilized what was there. So I like that. Um, lighting inside the house to you know, show that there's a fire indoors. So mise en scene, I'm gonna give a nine out of 10. Nine out of that 10? One. Yeah, yeah, it was this quite better than quite I expected. Seamless. I think for anyone who didn't know what they had to work with, I'd say like, oh, you know, you actually did quite well. Yeah, what, what, what do you think, George? Any... No, I mean, it doesn't matter what I think, but I agree, I think it was nicely done. I think the lighting inside the house is a really nice touch. It was a very, yeah, like the colouring and the intensity of the lighting I thought was brilliant. And this little focus pull from uh, um, father, son to Yoda at the end as well. Was it, was it a zoom? Well, it was a zoom, but I think you used the, uh, the breathing of the focus, right, to get I, I did right. that in post. So I did the focus pull. Ah. Did you really? And then, yeah, I scaled it and, and then did the movement in post. You know what? Oh. That's pretty well done. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's quite well done. Uh, camera and lighting. Um, seven out of ten. 
Um, so right. I really liked what you did with the gimbal. You used it with the remote control, so you could use the the puppet as well. So you really utilised the the kit for what it could do. Overall efficiency, because um, you did have to do a, a couple of lens changes. Because and you know setting up the gimbal obviously took a while because having to balance and then the lens change and everything have to balance again. Yeah. Um, overall efficiency, I'd say is a two point five out of five. It's fair. But it's fine. You know you got some really good points in the other three categories. Um, the overall efficiency, I'm only giving you like half the maximum total purely because uh, you know because of um, all of that kind of I admit stuff. it. I panicked. You got some like shaky camera going on. I feel like. If you used the gimbal for every shot, it would have been better, but yeah. I understand your reasonings for not. But uh, well done. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Very, very, very clean. Yeah, no, it was genuinely well really good. And amazing um, voice work as well for the characters. Yes, well, you know. You really put your... Um, it's you one, of, one of my, my best things I've done, I think, in my life. So oh. it was really that VO. Well, it Pretty. was well appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Really appreciate and that. to George. Hello, this is the police. You're being arrested under suspicion of murder. Oh no! Aha, we murdered them and we did it together and we're going to only ever tell everybody that we did it together. Ha ha. It's the police. We've come to arrest you under suspicion of murder because it was the accomplice. It wasn't me. It wasn't me at all. <laughs> wow. That was a, a fast-paced crime a drama. Ride. That is a wild ride, man. That was amazing. <laughs> wow, I mean, storytelling-wise, let's, let's have a look back. Like, I love this opening shot. It's strong. I mean, I remember you making this, and uh, yeah, I remember like uh, a lot of the props weren't behaving. Like, you tried no, to make the trees work man. and stuff. Yeah, and none at all. So I've got to say, it's quite confusing and so <laughs> fast-paced, because it's only 19 seconds. And I don't know who each of the characters are, either is the thing. <laughs> so I think storytelling wise, I'll probably have to give it, let's say a nine out of 15. It's fine by okay. me. Yeah. I do feel that you did utilize the storyboards very nicely. I think you were very true to them and your incorporation of like the camera movements with the lighting um, kind of helps to tell what the whole meaning behind each of those moments are. So very well done for that. Mise en scène, mate. Wow, it has everything about it that tells me that it's a crime drama. So let's give it a nine out of 10 because you've got the, the, the police lights going on. This lighting right here, I think is fantastic. It's got that kind of crime noir thriller vibe going on straight out of the gate. But you did use the gimbal for every shot. So you do have, you don't have shake per se, but I guess because you're weaving between these trees and the trees were very like kind of uh, tedious to work with. Um, you did have to make some compromises there. So I think for camera and lighting, because the lighting is so good, I'm going to have to say, oh man, this is tough. I'm going to have to give you a, I'm going to give you a, uh, damn, I'm going to have to give you a seven on that out of 10 for camera and lighting. For overall efficiency though, um, I'd like to give you a four out of five, I think. Wow. Mainly because you stuck with one piece of kit that you knew would get the job done. You thought I'll go for the, the 16 to 35, because then I'm getting my wider angles, which is always better for gimbal work, but you've mm -hmm. still got that zoom range so you could compose your shots as you need to on the fly. You kept it on the gimbal for the whole thing, did all your pushes and your zooms um, yourself. I remember when you were framing up for the shot of inside the house, it was too dark for you to actually see where the focus point was. So what you did was you removed the house first and then placed it after you set focus. So I thought that efficiency was Quite spot on. The only thing that let you down was obviously uh, that tree shot in the middle where the, the composure is not perfect. Yeah, well, that one, I wasn't super happy with that one. On the time constraints and the pressures involved, uh, it's kind of understandable that, that kind of thing can happen. Because professionally, and I think any professional can kind of relate to this, is that, you know, having a very short space of time to make a video will obviously impact the quality overall. Right, so final scores. I know it's a little bit jiggery pokery and all that stuff, but uh, George, total score of 29. Nice. Not too shabby. I mean, you both scored quite highly in this. I'm, I'm very impressed by the two of you. Yes, very impressed indeed. Oh, thank you, Sean. Amy. Yes. I'm so nervous. I've got 30.5. Yes! I mean, I mean, I oh, don't make great. the rules, but uh, I think that means you win, Amy. Thank you very much, already. Have you got a speech for us? Um, 
I just want to say that George's was absolutely hilarious, and if I was watching those two on YouTube, I would definitely watch it, <laughs> not mine. Thank you. I'm waiting for a sequel, actually. Yes, me yeah. too. I want to know what happens. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us with this Wex challenge. Hopefully, we'll be doing more challenges like this soon, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the craziness that might be coming your way. Thank you very much for watching.